The Area 51M is a unique beast. At first glance, it looks like what we used to expect from gaming laptops, an intimidating, hulking machine that doesn't really belong in the modern age of slim notebooks. But what makes it special is under the hood. Instead of slightly slower and energy efficient mobile components, it features powerful gear you typically find in desktops, like Intel's octa-core i9-9900K CPU, NVIDIA's full-speed RTX GPUs, and up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. And best of all, you can upgrade those parts down the line, just like a tower gaming rig. What exactly do you call a machine that looks like a laptop but functions like a desktop? The Area 51M practically defies classification. But let's just take the philosophically simple approach for now. It's a gaming laptop like no other. The first thing you'll notice about the Area 51M is that it's big, very big. It weighs eight and a half pounds, it's up to 1.7 inches thick, and it has a huge 17.3 inch screen. That seems practically unthinkable now that every PC maker is racing to get their gaming laptop slimmer and lighter. Even Dell is doing that with the Alienware M15 and M17. But compared to the last full-size 17-inch Alienware notebook, which weighed 9.7 pounds, the Area 51M is significantly more portable. And don't forget, it wasn't that long ago that gamers were perfectly happy with laptops over 10 pounds. The second thing that sticks out is that the Area 51M looks completely unlike any other Alienware notebook. It's the first step towards a cleaner, more futuristic style. Instead of the sharp lines and aggressive aesthetic Alienware used to rely on, the Area 51M actually has some rounded edges. And rather than just being draped in all black, there's finally a lighter color option. Add in some LEDs around the rear ports, and you have something that looks more like a sci-fi prop than a gaming notebook. There's no doubt Dell is trying to make a statement with the Area 51M. It's targeted at gamers who demand peak performance above all else. That's all thanks to Intel's desktop Z390 chipset, and all of the power-hungry, battery-killing components it supports. There's the Core i9-9900K, the fastest gaming chip Intel has ever produced, and it also has NVIDIA's RTX 20 series cards, which are the most powerful GPUs on the market today, and they enable new features like real-time ray tracing. It's also worth noting that Dell isn't plugging in the slower Max-Q versions of those chips. They're full speed and overclockable. And you can also throw in up to three separate drives, including speedy M.2 SSDs, larger hybrid drives, and a variety of RAID 0 configurations. It's no surprise that the Area 51M only gets around one and a half hours of battery life. That's Dell's last concern. The massive 17.3 inch display also packs in most of the features gamers demand today, including a fast 144 Hz refresh rate and thin bezels. There's also optional G-Sync support and Toby eye tracking. Unfortunately, the screen is only available in 1080p at the moment. That's not a huge concern since many players are more interested in getting the highest frame rates possible, but given how Dell is positioning this computer, I'd expect a higher resolution display eventually. That said, the Area 51M's 1080p screen is no slouch. Everything looks silky smooth as frame rates crept above 100 FPS in Overwatch, Forza Horizon 4, and Hitman 2. Colors popped off the screen, and it was bright enough for me to catch fine details as I sped through snowy roads in Forza. Unfortunately, there's no HDR support, which is slowly making its way to other gaming laptops. Given all of its hardware, the Area 51M will basically never disappoint you, no matter what game you throw at it. In the Hitman 2 benchmark, I saw around 105 FPS on average, with all the graphics settings set to maximum. And in Forza Horizon 4, I saw an eye blistering 124 FPS. With all that extra power, you can also super sample many games to render them at a high resolution, which makes them look even crisper in 1080p. Alienware's elaborate cooling, which includes two large fans that suck in fresh air from below and spit out heat from the rear vents, match to keep the GPU and CPU under 83 degrees Celsius. You have plenty of control over the cooling profiles, so you can rev up the fans for longer play sessions and make them near silent when you're just browsing the web. The Area 51M did a great job of managing all of that on its own when I chose the standard profile. As you'd expect, this is a system that's constantly spewing out warm air, so it might heat up small rooms. That could be a side benefit in the winter, but it's not ideal for summer months. The Area 51M relies on two large power adapters to keep everything running. It's annoying, but unavoidable, since AC chargers top out at 330 watts. Having another charger is simply necessary to keep this machine going, especially since it's relying on desktop parts. When you're not gaming, a single adapter is enough to power the Area 51M, but you'll need to have both plugged in once you start taxing the GPU. The Asus ROG mothership also relies on two power supplies. It's simply a physics problem as gaming laptops get more demanding. 
To get to the Area 51M's internals, you just have to take off the six Phillips head screws on the bottom of the case. That gives you direct access to four RAM slots, storage, and battery, but you'll have to dig in even further to reach the CPU and GPU. That involves removing another layer of the case, the rear port hump, the fan assembly, and disconnecting plenty of the components. It's not something you'll want to do often, and you'll also have to be extra careful about reconnecting everything. If this whole process sounds like a headache, and I'll be honest, it kind of is, that's another sign that Area 51M might not be for you. Even if you're used to upgrading desktop PC components, dealing with the confined space of a laptop case, even a large one like the Area 51M, is going to be frustrating. Still, if you can afford it, and don't mind the annoying disassembly process, the Area 51M gives you an unprecedented amount of upgradability in a laptop. If you're tempted by a new Intel chip in a few years, you can just throw that in. And while the GPU rests in a proprietary Alienware module, the company says it'll have new components coming later this year. There's no guarantee it'll keep pace with whatever NVIDIA releases in the near future though, so you're taking a bit of a gamble there. Unfortunately, the components you can't upgrade on the Area 51M, namely the keyboard and the trackpad, are the ones that sorely need the most improvement. While the keyboard looks and feels great at first, with RGB LEDs and 2.2 millimeters of travel, it feels a bit flimsy while gaming. I'm also worried about its long-term durability. When we first received the Area 51M, one of the keys flew off within 10 minutes of turning it on. Normally I'd just snap it back into place, but somehow the plastic spring mechanism underneath it was completely shattered. This is the sort of thing Dell would fix under warranty if it happened to you, but it's still incredibly disheartening to see it in such an expensive machine. And for the record, they later sent us another unit to test. The trackpad, meanwhile, feels surprisingly cramped for a modern laptop. We're used to ultra-thin notebooks giving us a ton of space to swipe around, but with the Area 51M, my fingers always felt boxed in. Alienware also opted for an old-school two-button mechanism instead of just letting you click into the trackpad. Using it made me feel like I was transported back in time. Of course, gamers will be relying on mice most of the time, but it would have been nice to see Dell innovate a bit with its design. Even moving over the trackpad from the slimmer Alienware M15 would have been an improvement. Given its massive size, Alienware was able to cram in just about every port you'd need. There are three USB Type-A ports along the sides, a single USB-C Thunderbolt 3 connection, as well as HDMI, DisplayPort, Ethernet, headphone, and microphone jacks. And of course, there's the proprietary Alienware graphics amplifier connection, which lets you plug in the company's external GPU adapter for even more power. To be honest, that seems like overkill for a machine that already packs in a desktop's worth of performance, but I'm sure there are graphics-hungry gamers out there who will take every advantage they can get. After spending several days with the Area 51M, I'm both awestruck and a bit disappointed. Sure, it's incredibly powerful and upgradable, but I'd be hard-pressed to recommend it to most gamers. Given its size and price, starting at $1,950 but configurable to over $5,000, most gamers would be better off with any of the sub five pound notebooks we've been seeing over the past year, like the Asus Zephyr series, the Gigabyte Aero 15, and MSI's GS65 Stealth Thin. They can also double as decent productivity machines for getting work done on the go, and some even have a respectable battery life. Most importantly, they'll get you most of the performance you'd want without crushing your back and your wallet. Alienware has made one thing clear with the Area 51M. It's doing something nobody else is. So for a certain subset of gamer, it probably doesn't matter if there are lighter and cheaper options out there. They just want the powerful new laptop that has the guts of a desktop and they'll pay whatever it takes to have it. The Area 51M might not be the wisest purchase, but certainly one of the wildest choices out today.